Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Beginner Web Design and in this video we're going to be taking a look at a lot of different jQuery methods. We're going to be learning quite a lot and you can see that we're continuing with our to-do list here. Uh, so I've left it just how we had it in the previous episode with all of our scripts intact and in this episode we're going to first set up this delete uh, function to delete the item and then after that we're going to work on putting a check box to the left of that where we can check off when these items are completed. So in order to do that, let's just first start with this delete button. And you could see that uh, just like before, we're going to have to set up a new event binding. So for each one of these buttons, I'm going to, uh, let's see, these buttons up here, I'm going to set them to have a class. So the class is going to be um, Let's say, let's just make it delete. So each one of these buttons should have that class. And of course, in our scripts file where we declare uh, that we're creating one of these buttons, we want to put in a class of delete as well. And now when we go to add this event binding, we can just copy and paste. And we're going to use dot delete to symbolize that we're selecting all elements that have that class. And on click, we're going to run, let's call it delete item. So we'll go ahead and make a new function called delete item. And now we want to tell it that it should completely delete that item off of the page. So in order to do that, we can use the remove function. But there's a problem here. If we type in for our selector, let's say li, and we say dot remove, what happens when we run this is that it deletes all the LIs off the page, not just that LI. So we have to use a very special type of selector. And this selector does not use a string, it just uses the word this. And we do not need uh, quotes around this because like I said, it's not a string, it's actually a variable that's part of JavaScript. So if we make it this.remove, you could see that it removes that specific element. Now again, we have another problem here because this refers to the button that was pressed, but we have to make sure that we want to remove the entire list item. So in order to do that, we can actually just type in dot parent and the parent method selects the object that contains that element. So for example, here we're saying take the dot delete item that was pressed. So for example, that's this here. And then the parent method is saying select the item around that, its parent, which is this li. Now if we go ahead and run this, you can see that it deletes that item off of the page. And of course we still have the ability to add it back in with that little input. So now that we know how to do that, let's take a look at adding a check mark before these. So in order to do that, we're just going to use another input. And the type of this input is going to be checkbox. And again, this is self-closing. We can see how this works here. It's a nice little checkbox. And I'm just going to, go, going to copy and paste this. And we'll also paste this when a list item is inserted. So now you can see we always have this checkbox before each of our list items. Now we want to make sure that when this is pressed, this box gets grayed out or it gets a strike through or something like that. So in order to do that, we want to set up a new function here. So let's go ahead and we'll give these a class name as well. We'll give them a class of done. put it up here as well and we're going to say dot done on click and name it finish item so we'll declare function finish item and now what we're going to say is we're going to say how about first we'll, let's start off with this and then we're going to say dot parent again because again this is referring to this checkbox and we want to get the list item itself and now let's put a strike through. 
So in order to do that, there's actually a CSS command. Uh, and in CSS, if we're working with CSS, it would look something like this, where we would have text decoration line through. And that's how to do a strike through in CSS. So in order to do that in JavaScript, in jQuery, we can use the .css. And in the .css, it's, it accepts two different strings. One is the attribute and then the value for that attribute. So the attribute is going to be text decoration. And again, in JavaScript, we want to get rid of the dash and make the next letter capital, which is what we've done here. And the value is going to be line through. Now, if we go ahead and take a look, you can see that we get that line through whenever we check that. However, if we uncheck it, nothing happens. There's nothing that changes. So we have to set up a way to make sure that this gets unchecked if we press it again. So in order to do that, we're going to use an if statement. And that's pretty much the easiest way to do that in this scenario. So we want to say if, and inside this if statement, I'm just going to put spaces around these uh, parentheses. This way we can see what we're doing a little bit better. If this dot parent dot CSS text decoration equals equals line through. And you could see here that in this version, uh, or in this instance of the CSS method, I haven't used two different strings. I've only used one. And you can remember that when we use this val up here, if we put a string in the val, then it set that input to that string. But if we left this val blank, then it just gave us what's inside the input. So it's very similar for CSS. If we give it a attribute and a value, it will set that attribute to that value. But if we don't pass it a value, it'll tell us what the value is. So we're going to say that if this has a line through, then we want to take this item, which again is just this top parent, and we want to set the CSS of text decoration to none. Just like that. And then we're going to make an else statement here, which means that if this.parent.css text decoration is not a line through, then we do want to add a line through. So if we go ahead and try and preview this and we try to use these check buttons, you can see that it works perfectly. We can use both of, both of them at the same exact time. But there is one problem here. And that is if we attempt to add another item here, this check mark doesn't do anything. Even more so, this delete button doesn't do anything. But still, these two do, as well as these two. So why is that? Well, <clears throat> the problem is, when the browser gets this on method, it is looking for all of the dot dones that it can find on the page and it's assigning this function to every single one of those objects. And this is one at the beginning of the page. Once it's done rendering, it's performing this as soon as possible. So what happens is, when we go ahead and try to add a new item to this to-do list, it the dot done and the dot delete of that new item, they don't have this event binding because the browser already binded this function to any elements it could find. So what we actually have to do is use a different uh, dot on method. So what we have to do here is we have to use a different selector. And we're going to use document. And document does not need quotes around it. It's a JavaScript super variable. So uh, jQuery knows what you're talking about when you say document. You don't need to make it a string. And we're going to use dot on again. And just like before, let's say on the click, and we'll assign finish item. Now there is another thing that we can do with that on. We could pass it another variable. And this goes in between the event and the function, and it's another string. And that is the selector that we use up here, dot done. 
So now what it's going to do is when this command is processed in the browser, the browser is going to say, okay, every time I click on document, I should check if I clicked on a dot done. And if I did, I should perform finish item. And we have to do that for delete as well because delete buttons are inserted onto the page as well. So let's go ahead and add another one for delete. And this one should still go to delete item. Just like that. Now we do not need to do that for add. And the reason why is because add is already on this page, so JavaScript is fully capable of binding that event. There's no reason to add it to the document because there's never going to be another element with the ID of add added to the page. It's there already, so we don't have to worry about that. Now the reason really why we don't assign it to document is because document is just a little bit slower and uh, heavier on the processing than just assigning it to the element is, but we do need to use it on the document element when we have uh, items that are added into the page. So if we go ahead and save this and preview it, you can see that it still works. Oops. But now more importantly, when we add something, it still works as well. So it works absolutely beautifully. And of course that add button is still working, we can delete and check off, and there we go. So we've learned quite a lot in this episode. We've learned parent and remove and CSS, a new method of using on. So I hope you guys have learned something in this episode. And in the next one, we'll be taking a look at some even more jQuery methods.